That's you. Yeah, I'm gonna answer my unmute. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Laura Wachowski, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to worship at Aldersgate United Methodist Church. It's good to be with you all, and what a week it's been, right? Holy cow. <laughs> uh, during this time of physical distancing, we have offered online pre-recorded and outdoor worship, and we're now happy to offer Zoom worship in our quest to seek new ways to worship safely. Each week, we share our hospitality statement in an effort to let you know everyone is welcome at Aldersgate. We are a community where all are welcome to participate fully in the life of the congregation, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, special needs, economic or marital status, or faith history. We live and work honoring our vision statement of grow in love and seek justice for all creation. The worship design team wants to remind you about a few things regarding Zoom for those of you who are with us live. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, you will notice a chat box and you are encouraged to use that chat box during worship to share greetings with each other, uh, to share prayer requests so all can see them. Simply type in your message. To reduce background noise and for better sound quality, our Zoom host will be keeping your sound muted, except for Cafe Connect. We will have a few minutes after worship that uh, your microphone will be unmuted and it will be your chance to talk to each other and enjoy a time of fellowship. Today we continue our series, Pay It Forward. Trusting in God's providence in all things is a practice, not a once and done achievement. Godly mindfulness, peace of mind, and contentment are cultivated through trust in God's loving wisdom. Consider these questions. Have you ever found contentment in hardship? How has God's gift of peace in trying times informed your faith and calling? Let's prepare ourselves for worship. Whether we are in our sanctuary or in our homes, we begin our worship by lighting the Christ candle. As you prepare yourselves for worship, remember that God is present, uniting us together, no matter how far apart we are, an ever-present light in our darkness. So take a deep breath, let yourselves settle in, breathe in the Holy Spirit, letting it fill every part of you, and quiet your mind to hear God's word. Amen. Good morning. I, 
I forgot that you can't speak, so I was waiting for the good morning. Um, this is Miss Ann, and this is Children's Time. I um, want to say a special good morning to the kids. I see Kaysen and Elliot and Emery and Alex and Caroline. I think those are the ones I see online. And so anybody that's watching at home later, um, good morning to you or good afternoon, whatever you're watching this. Um, so does anybody, okay, so you have, I'm gonna make, make it so that I can see you all. So if you wanna speak, you raise your hand and then I'll call on you. So we're not all unmuting at the same time. But does anybody remember last week what we talked about, kids? Alex? Um, we talked about push it forward. And push it forward is where like you do a good deed to someone else and then they do something to someone else and they do something to someone else and it keeps going. Very good, good memory. I did not prep him, I want everyone to know that. Um, so we, we called it pay it forward too, didn't we, right? So pay it forward or push it forward. I like the push it forward too, very nice. Cool, so um, today um, we are, we have a couple of verses um, that we're gonna hear Miss Laura read to us in a few minutes. Um, and one of the verses, or one of the verses at the end of the scripture that she's reading is from Philippians 4, 13. Sometimes um, we are, we need some strength or some help from God when we want to um, do those things that Alex was just talking about, like maybe paying it forward to someone. When we are being kind, sometimes um, we want God to help us a little bit more. Does that make sense that we want some help from God? So we're going to um, say this verse together, and then I'm going to teach you um, a little bit of sign language for it. So the, the verse at the end of what Miss Laura is going to read today is from Philippians 4, 13, and it's, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, okay? So I want all the kids and adults, you have, you're welcome to join in, but I want you guys to help me out with the sign language. So we're just going to point at ourselves for I. Can you do that, please? Okay, good. So I can do, put both fists down and go like this, do, and then we're going to kind of make a circle with one hand, all, like this. Just try that one again, it's kind of weird. So you put one hand and then all, yeah? <laughs> it's fun to watch. Okay, I can do all things. So let's do that much so far. So I can do all things. Now make a C. I'm making it with my right hand so everybody can see the C. You don't have to. I, well, maybe you do actually with real sign language, so. And we're gonna go from our, our shoulder all the way down to our waist, Christ, like that. Kind of like a banner across our body, okay? I'll, I can do all things through Christ who gives, just kind of give somebody something with one hand. And then we're gonna put both hands up here and then be strong, strength. So through, let's do the second half, through Christ who gives me strength. Okay, we're gonna try it all together now. So here's I, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, I, that's a good one to remember, I think. Miss April right, might remember that she learned that when she was a kid and we, <laughs> she did it, she did it with puppets, I think, right, April? <laughs> when, when she was in church. And so it's one that I've known for a long time. So hopefully that sign language will help you remember um, that when you, um, that helps you through anything, but even what Pastor Jim is probably going to talk about today on, on different things um, in your life, anytime you need help, it's, you keep that in the back of your head and you think of the sign language, maybe that will help you remember it. Okay, cool. Anybody have anything they want to share? Case and Caroline, Elliot, Alex, nope, Alex is waving no. Okay, well, it's good to see you all this morning. So everybody have a good day and we're going to move on to the next thing. Okay, thank you.
for the new song. My soul will bless you, Lord. You fill my life with greater joy. Yes, I delight myself in you. And I will praise you with a new song. My soul will bless you, Lord. Almighty God, my Redeemer, my hiding place, my safe refuge, no other name like Jesus. No power can stand against you. My feet are planted on this rock, and I will not be shaken. My hope, it comes from you alone, my Lord and my salvation. Your praise is always on my lips. Your word is living in my heart, and I will praise you with a new song. My soul will bless you, Lord. You fill my life with greater joy. Yes, I delight myself in you. And I will praise you with a new song. My soul will bless you, Lord. When I am weak, you make me strong. When I'm poor, I know I'm rich for in the power of your name. Have you ever stopped to appreciate your effect after you offer a kindness to someone else? Relishing the joy and contentment of such an experience is an act of worship in and of itself. Practicing such noticing produces beneficial consequences in one's faith. Listen to the author of the letter of the followers of Jesus in Philippi, Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me.
Welcome. For those of you joining us at a later time, I'm Jim Hodge, pastor of Aldersgate United Methodist Church in Grand Rapids. And we give you thanks that you're with us and to all those who help support the ministries of our church. Last week, we considered the notion of paying it forward as a Christian lifestyle in keeping with the teachings and ministry of Christ Jesus. And do you remember your challenge? The challenge was to pay it forward to someone and while we're together this morning, to feel free to share what you did or perhaps how it impacted your faith on the chat feature of the Zoom platform. We'll continue the challenge each week through this series. Today, we're considering why such practice is a fundamental aspect of our experiences of God's providence. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the many ways your love is paid forward to us. As we hear and apply your word, empower us to live lives worthy of your call. Give us patience, hope, and love to accomplish all good things that faith inspires. Amen. So if you haven't figured it out by now, the city in my background is our city, Grand Rapids. And it's worth note, I think, especially on this day, that we are where we are. And so I ask you, how's it going? To paraphrase a renowned personages of the Holy Writ, Dudes and dudettes. It's not like that I like want for nothing. It's that I like have totally found my center, you know? To be cool and calm and like majorly gnarly in all situs, okay? Really, dude? Really? In every situation? Even in the age of COVID? Really? Even during a contested presidential election? So, how have you been coping over the past week? Now, I invite you to raise your hands. You don't have to, but you can if you want. If any of these applied to you over the past few days. Expectant. Disappointed. Flabbergasted. Impatient. Gobsmacked. Angry. Depressed, cautiously hopeful, weary, fearful, a tendency toward incessant muttering and or lengthy conversations with yourself, impatient, sobbing, concerned, sympathetic, giggling uncontrollably, impatient, self-medicating, joyous, Perturbed. Did I mention impatient? Now, raise your hands. You, you can if you want. You don't have to. If all of them applied to you, you and I, we may need some sort of intervention. I mean, how is it even possible to find stillness, let alone contentment, in all the discontinuity? the socio-political apnea of the day, the in-between time, the torturous self-induced surcease. Living through this past week, waiting for the election count to be over, living on a hope and prayer, fretting the worst, wishing for some semblance of normalcy, daymaring how possibly to soldier on if things go completely south, Oh, okay, so maybe you don't take elections that seriously. But chances are that you're pretty good, and they're pretty good that you have experienced the hell of abeyance at some point. Maybe it's biting your nails while your favorite sports team tries to make the playoffs. Or, or maybe it's mentally or physically pacing while you're waiting for some test results. 
or, or maybe it's struggling through life after losing someone you love dearly. What happens to us in times of need? Have you noticed? I have, and particularly three things. God puts people and opportunities in front of us to help us meet our needs in the moment, in every moment. Then, God helps us see a purpose for our faith in life beyond those difficult times, beyond those needs. And then, God gives us opportunities to share what we have with others, even in a especially if it's just a little, like a poor widow who gives her last penny when she's got absolutely nothing left to lose. And what happens to us in times of plenty? Have you noticed? I have, and particularly three things. God puts people and opportunities in front of us to help us meet our needs in the moment, in every moment. And then God helps us see a purpose for our faith and life beyond our wealth, beyond our blessedness, on behalf of others. And then God gives us opportunities to share all that we have with others, even if, and especially if it's an excess of resources, like some rich young ruler who gives reluctantly, if at all, when he's got everything to lose. But what is nothing, and what is everything without God, without love? without justice, without forgiveness, without transformation. Is having everything to lose simply the obverse of having nothing to lose? Perhaps it's better that, that we slow down and be still and know that in all things, at all times, God is with us, giving us everything we need to be faithful to God in the moment and in every moment. If we could manage that, couldn't we say with the author to the letter of the followers of the way of Jesus in Philippi, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, and I can do it all through God who strengthens me. And saying that, experiencing that, knowing that, trusting that, well, the consequence of it is a peace with a passion for others. A life of paying the love of God forward to others. And the consequence of paying the love of God forward is an expansive contentment, a trust, an openness, a strength, a widening faith. I came across a story this week of a single mom with a one month old and her baby came down with a terrible ear infection that left him crying throughout the day and night. And after waiting in the emergency room for over two hours, the critical care, the emergency care doctor finally prescribed her son some medication for the infection. Though unfortunately for this single mother, the medicine ended up costing right around $130, which was well over her price range as a new mom. So she went she went to the store to pick up the medication, and just as she was getting ready to call her mom to help her out with the payment, an older woman walked up to her with a bag. She had paid for the eardrops after seeing the young mother struggle to find the money. 
And when the young mother asked if she could pay the woman back, she just told her, no. When you get a chance, pay it forward. That, dear friends, is the human incarnation of the Spirit of Christ and the advent of yet another birth of God's unabating love. The Spirit blesses us, each and every one, in every situation, in every circumstance, with opportunities to make things like this happen every day. May it be so for you. As we come to a time of prayer, we do want to remember those of our fellowship who are homebound, Mary Lou Arnold, Joanne Ensley, Eleanor Howison, Lois Jessup, Barb Libby, and Arlene Parker. And there are a couple of prayer requests this morning. This one from our friend Lori Elliott. My daughter has tested positive for COVID-19 and is isolating in my basement apartment. And the rest of us are quarantining, including my granddaughter who is spending time upstairs with me and my son. And my son is babysitting her while I have to teach virtually from home right now. Quite a roller coaster. We are awaiting for test results for me and for my granddaughter and my son is going in to be tested. And then from our friend Diana Wieda, prayers on the death of a friend, Christina, who passed away on October 31. And we also want to remember all those we have named in our hearts and minds and in the chat feature on Zoom this morning. Let's pray. God, we gather again, to offer you praise and give you thanks for your faithful love, a love that never fails, not even when we turn away, not even when we ignore your invitations, not even when we desert you for gods of our own making. Even then, you don't abandon us, but reach out again and again, inviting us back into relationship with you. So at all times and in all places, you welcome us. And when you welcome us, you welcome our prayers. You welcome the entirety of who we are. And these thoughts and prayers, we bring them to you with confidence, knowing that you will hear and answer. We pray for the world you created and the people who share it with us. For countries caught up in war and conflict and violence. For regions of the world struggling with increased cases of COVID-19. For those whose homes and lives are threatened by natural disaster. For these and all the other areas in our world where there is need and despair. God, we pray for our country and for its people, for free and fair elections, for government leaders, federal and local, for our judicial system, police forces, military, for our cities, towns, and rural communities, for employers and employees, for young and old, for all who are part of this great country. We pray for our local community, the people of Northview and the Grand Rapids area, for those who are unemployed, for those in prison, for those fighting COVID or caring for others who are infected, for those who are hungry, for those alone and afraid, 
for all our neighbors, known and unknown to us. We pray for our congregation, our brothers and sisters in Christ, all those who are ill or whose loved ones are ill, for those who are anxious about the future, those struggling with their faith, those who minister among us, for all your people, God, in this fellowship of Christ. Pour your spirit upon us, fix our hearts and minds on what is true and honorable and right. Give us the joy and peace that comes from knowing and doing your will. Keep us faithful to the call we have received in Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, extending your loving invitation to the world around us. Amen. Remember that you can stick around following the closing song for a few minutes to chat with each other. Friends, praise God that we can learn in every situation how to be content. In every and any circumstance, we can learn the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. We can do all things through him who strengthens us. So live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ, who loved us and redeemed us, a pleasing offer to God. Amen. Amen.